Last Sunday, we brought you the story of the Ministers of the Sick, a Catholic order that fled from the Chinese Communists and came to Taiwan in 1952. After settling in Yilan County, this group, known as the Chameleons, threw themselves into building a hospital that treated the poor for free. But as the years went by and the Chameleons learned more about their community's needs, they began to treat more forms of illnesses and take on more forms of service. Chameleons provided an unprecedented level of emotional support and care for children with disabilities, equipping them with important life skills. Over time, they helped to erase the social stigma of having a child with disabilities. Today, in part two of our special report, we turn back to a little-known chapter of Elan history to revisit the legacy of the Chameleons. Whether they're digging for gold or minerals, miners must venture deep into places where the sky cannot be seen, into mines underground where the air is stuffy and stagnant. They put their lives at risk, not only from collapsing tunnels, but also from lung diseases like silicosis. In 1959, Luodong St. Mary's Hospital established a tuberculosis treatment center at Wanshan Sanatorium. The new facility quickly became a ray of hope for people with silicosis. It seemed that if there was an illness that couldn't be treated where the patients lived, they would come to us. For example, before, like in Ruifang, Zhou Fen, and Hou Tong, places like that. Over there, they had mines and lots of diseases. Those miners, silicosis, they all had silicosis and tuberculosis, so they would come to us for treatment. Tuberculosis is a chronic disease, and its treatment takes time. Once a miner got sick, he was entitled to only 1.5 months of pay and health coverage, even if he had company insurance. Once that limited insurance period was up, a miner could rely on nothing except savings. Because of this, St. Mary's free treatment drew many poor miners from as far away as Taipei County or Jilong. Among them was film director Wu Nian Zhen's father, a miner named Lian Qingke. The worst thing was, after your company insurance was used up, you still weren't fully recovered, and your family was already burdened with debt. At a time like this, what could a sick miner do? Going back to the hospital meant having to pay. I remember that back then, and this left a deep impression, a miner facing those circumstances would say, I may as well head to St. Mary's. Why did we have such a large number of patients at our outpatient clinic? There was a reason for it. There were some patients who were poor, including some who never mentioned it. If the hospital saw someone who appeared to be very poor, they would automatically give a discount on the patient's bill. For example, they might see someone and charge them only half the fee. Some would be charged only 30% or 20%. Back then in Taiwan, if you had no money at the point of being discharged, you basically couldn't leave. It was just like how if you couldn't put up a deposit, you wouldn't be admitted. But at St. Mary's Hospital, it was no problem. They would let you leave, but you had to write an IOU. You would write down how much money you owed them, and then you could go. Even if several years passed, they wouldn't come after you. After several years, they would burn up the IOU. So it seemed to me that this was a hospital that was benevolent toward us. The range of illnesses treated at St. Mary's expanded daily. As the operation grew, the chameleons transferred brother Marinello Renato from its Hui Min Hospital in Penghu to Luodong. Italian-born Marinello was born into a poor family and joined the chameleons when he was only 13 years old. After graduating with a medical degree in Rome at 26, he followed the chameleons overseas to treat the poor. During that time, he worked in China's Yunnan province treating patients with leprosy. He later moved to Penghu's Magong city where he helped build the Mali Clinic, which later became Hui Min Hospital. There he treated leprosy, polio, and tuberculosis. At 37, he was transferred to St. Mary's and began working at the Wanshan Sanatorium. 
After his arrival, the number of patients there rose sharply, and St. Mary's began preparing to build a new ward. The new ward, with its 300 beds, was completed in 1961. Marinello took charge of the new ward with his unique management style. Brother Marinello was our manager and he paid attention to things. For example, he noted when we started our shifts, how we wore our uniform and how we interacted with patients. If we were particularly busy that day, he would surprise us with some bread or a bottle of Yakult. He would immediately ask the assistant manager to order bread because he knew that all of us would work past noon and not have time to get food. I feel that he really had a heart for people management. During my 40 plus years at the hospital, he was very strict but rarely sent a staff member home. Brother Marinello was stern yet warm with his staff. Toward patients, he was even more considerate. He worked six days a week, taking Sunday off. He most loved taking little trips with a bicycle as his companion, and he would personally deliver medicine to patients. He would go riding, sometimes to Sanxing Township. If he saw poor people, the next week he would bring them medicine. Dr. Marinello, along with skilled surgeon Yanis Yanis, became the two stars of St. Mary's. Because one handled internal medicine and the other surgery, they came to be known as the heroes of internal and external medicine. They made the hospital famous nationwide, and even patients from southern Taiwan would circle halfway around the island to get treated there. In 1969, St. Mary's Hospital added another surgery ward, with the first floor serving as a classroom for nursing students, the second for inpatients and surgical operations rooms, and the third for gynecology and obstetrics. By this time, St. Mary's was playing a critical role in medical care in Taiwan. The chameleons were also pioneers in giving attention to the issue of children with mental disabilities. The central figure in the chameleons' outreach was Father Giuseppe Didoni. Didoni was born in Italy and grew up in a household with nine siblings. When he was 10 years old, he joined the chameleons. And at 24, was ordained a priest. The next year, he came to Taiwan, living since then first in Penghu and later in Luodong. Particularly during his time at Huimin Hospital in Magong, he began to focus his work on children with disabilities. At the time, an official from the Department of Social Welfare asked me, can you help these children? So I met with two women, who later helped me establish the St. Camillus Center for Intellectual Disability. We went to visit the children. At the time, there were about 500 of them. But at the time, Elan society tended to keep things under wraps. No parents wanted others to know their children were like this. For them, it was embarrassing. So when we visited a lot of times, we were told there were no such children there. They would say, my children are all good. In those days, family tended to keep quiet about children with disabilities. It was a face-saving measure that sacrificed their child's opportunity to receive treatment. Supported by social welfare officials, Father Giuseppe visited more than 500 families with disabled children. He renovated an abandoned monastery at Wanshan Sanatorium, hiring specialists to work with the children there. In June 1987, the St. Camilla Center for Intellectual Disability was established. This was the first center for the disabled south of Elan's Lanyang River. <laughs> At that time, there were 16 children and four teachers. Later, the parents went to see them going up the mountain to visit them. They wondered what could be done for their children, who they thought were fools. Then they saw that these kids, who started out unable to brush their teeth, could do so two months later. They could also dress themselves and wash their faces. So the parents of these 16 children, along with other parents, spread the word, telling people there was a school on the mountain that could truly help their children. These parents were touched, and they went to tell other parents. Later on, the enrollment rose to its current level, 138 children. St. Camilla's Center for Intellectual Disability not only teaches life skills to children with disabilities, it also teaches valuable career skills to disabled people between 18 and 35. When the center was first established, Father Giuseppe would visit every day at 6 a.m. to interact with the students. 
he would warmly take one small pair of hands after another into his own. The students felt Father Giuseppe's love toward them and would vie for his attention. The children we cared for suffered from both mental and physical disabilities, many types of impairments. Children with multiple impairments are hard to care for. The parents, to be honest, could do very little for them, but our priests care for them very meticulously. There were people who, when they came to visit our center, saw children sitting in wheelchairs, struggling even to speak. They saw limbs that impaired freedom of movement. They said, these children are so pitiful. But our priest corrected them, saying the children were not pitiful, they were adorable. The care these children received from us was no different from what an angel would provide. As the chameleons expanded their social welfare services, St. Mary's Hospital underwent many structural upgrades. In the summer of 1987, the hospital's original surgical ward building was upgraded to an 11-floor outpatient clinic. Two years later, in November 1989, it was open for use. But though the physical facilities of St. Mary's were modernized over time, its founders only slipped farther into old age.